Hey guys, this is Revy Goldwasser, and if you've come to this video, that's because you are thinking about getting a divorce. You've probably been married 5, 10, 15, 20 years, sometimes even 30 years. I've, I've seen it all, and you're just wondering if this is something that you should really go through with. So if you're thinking about it, wondering about it, not sure what to do with it, if it's a good idea for you, you have come to the right place, so check it out. Hey guys, this is Rebbe Goldwasser and we're now going to be talking about should I get a divorce? You know, I was married for 20 years and that question probably embraced my life for 10 years out of the 20. So I completely understand what you're going through. Getting a divorce is such a collateral damage on so many levels. It is a decision that must, must, must be taken very seriously. And I truly believe all options need to be exhausted. I mean, really exhausted before you ultimately pull the plug. And I have my even other opinions on people who have an affair and end up leaving their marriage because, you know, they're having an affair and they're with another woman or a man. I have my own thoughts on that. I actually feel that that is usually a disastrous situation to get a divorce because I believe that five years later you're going to regret it and, you know, you're not really dealing with the true issues. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you're having an affair and because you were this other woman, you're thinking about breaking up your family, I'm here to tell you that time out, don't do it. If anything, seek therapy, seek counseling and figure out the real issues and see what, what is going on. Because when you leave a beautiful family in a home that you've spent 10, 15, 20 years with because of another woman or another man as well, again, it, it works both ways you're not coping with, you're not addressing rather the real issue of what's going on. There's some needs that aren't being met. And instead of fixing those needs on your own, and by the way, I have a separate video about emotional needs that you should definitely watch. But what happens when you have the affair and, and you're with the other partner, you're having that partner address your neediness and that doesn't work because you're going to basically uh, create more drama with this new person. So that's my thought on cheating. And by the way, my husband did not cheat on me. He never cheated on me. I left him. But based on a lot of the support groups and therapy and the reading that I've done, that is really my strong opinion. If that is who you are, if you're somebody who's having an affair and you're thinking about leaving your spouse because of it, I'm, I'm begging you to just hit the brakes, hit the brakes and see what you can do to fix your family, fix your marriage, and most importantly, fix you. But other than that, what happens with people that think about getting a divorce is that you are very unhappy, right? Usually that's what happens. I mean, why would anyone want to get a divorce? Usually you're very, very unhappy and you are just not thriving in the relationship. Um, this could be a number of factors. You might just not love him. He may not love you. You're completely different people. Maybe, you know, and I'm going to be speaking from a woman's perspective to a man, but again, a man can you know, revert the roles, obviously. So as a woman, you might have a husband who's a drug addict or an alcoholic. You know, to me, those are major red flags. And I know as a woman, if that is who you are watching this video, I'm sure you've tried a million different ways to fix him, rescue him, save him, you know, control him, do everything you can. And you're probably now at wit's end, which is why you've come to this video, because you just don't know what to do at this point and getting a divorce seems like a really good option and I'm going to tell you that I'm going to agree with you because usually women that exhibit and oh I have a book actually where is the book this woman give it up to you her name is Melody Beattie um, it's called The New Codependency she's written a lot of books she's a great author but the first book that she wrote I wish I had it I have to find it in my bookshelf it's called The Dance of Anger so if you are a woman that's with a man who's an alcoholic or a drug addict, um, also a narcissist and a verbally abusive and God forbid physical abusive, I mean, I, I don't even relate to that. That's never happened to me. But physical abuse to me is a, it's a, it's a non-starter, like call the cops, get out. But it's not so easy because women who are in these bad marriages with these toxic 
partners that are alcoholics, drug, drug addicts. Again, my personal experience is not with that, but I had a very toxic, verbally abusive husband. What happens is we are codependent. So we try to fix, save, control, rescue this partner, and what happens, we become absolutely exhausted. So you're coming to this video right now because you're just depleted. You are wiped out. You're at wit's end. And when you're like that, you absolutely, and by the way, it could be a number of other reasons we're, we'll talk about, but I'm here to honor you right now. This is really, really important. I'm going to stop. You must honor your true feelings. You must honor who you really are. You must honor who you are as a person. You must honor your feelings. You must honor your passions. You must honor your emotions. You must honor your happiness. What happens in a marriage, especially when we've invested so much of ourselves into this partner, is stop doing that. And all you do is you honor him and you take care of him and you put him first and he always comes before you. Your life revolves around him. What's best for him? What will make him happy? You know, how, how should we function? All these things. And what happens as we get older, we get depleted. You get exhausted. Because if you're in this one-way relationship that you're constantly giving, 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 and your partner is not giving you back, especially giving you back to address your needs, which we'll talk about in another video, you're, you will run out of energy. You will run out of strength. And you will reach a place, excuse me, you will reach a place in your relationship. And this to me is really sad that you'll either have the trigger, you'll be like, I'm out of here. And that's usually what happens, right? The saying is, oh, you know, he divorced her because of how she, you know, closes the, bangs the cabinet doors or that she doesn't close the door, whatever nonsense that is incorrect. That's incorrect. That nobody divorces over how the person bangs the doors. They divorce because that's the trigger that set them off because there's years, if not decades, right? You'll hear of marriages 20 plus years. I was married 20 years. I'm on TikTok. There's people that were married 30 to 35 years that are now going through a divorce. Imagine they're in their 60s and 70s. Like, imagine that. Like, that's just insane. But again, I honor you. I honor you. You know, it takes such courage to come to a place and say, you know, I've done everything I can to sustain my marriage, but it's not working and I, I need, I need to be happy. I need to thrive. I need to feel alive. I need to love. I need to have sanity. I need to have my space. I need quiet. I need, you know, whatever that is, whatever that is, is. So I'm here to tell you that if you're thinking about getting a divorce, honor you because many of us that start thinking that we, we 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 are exhausted because and again i'm not talking about somebody who's been married one or two years i'm talking about family kids you know, single digits double digits teenagers etc assets responsibilities college family birthdays bar mitzvahs you know, coronations whatever it's a it's it's a tremendous heartbreak. It's a collateral damage on so many levels. But but if you are that unhappy, if you can look me in the eye and say, you know what, Rebbe, I have done everything in my power, in my ability to save the marriage, then I'm gonna say honor you. Because you have every right to be happy. You have every right to love and be loved. You have every right to thrive and be at peace and not have the chaos and drama. You do. You have every right to do that. And what happens many times in a bad marriage, we forget about ourselves. You know, I know with me in my marriage, I completely checked out of me. I did everything for my husband. I'm talking everything. I was textbook codependent with him. That's why I brought up you know, this book, again, Melanie Beattie. Um, and um, it even says codependent no more. She, she, she wrote that. That's excellent. And also the dance of anger. But I'm going back again to this fear factor of, oh, crap, you know, do I really want to do it? Do I really want to pull the trigger? Only you can honor that. Only you can decide that. Only you can execute that. And by the way, if you cannot, that's okay, too. Like, it's okay. Because it is no joke to walk away from a 20-year marriage. It is no joke to 
what if the kids and the assets and the money and the alimony and the chaos and the anger, I mean, all hell breaks loose when you get a divorce. So I, I'm here to honor that in you and tell you that your decision is the right decision, whatever it is, but I'm also here to remind you, excuse me, because I'm going so, uh, so close to the mic. I'm also here to remind you that you have to honor you. That's also very, very important. Of course, you have to be sensitive with your children, and, and as you're going to deal with the chaos of the divorce, not ring them in. I'm going to have a separate video about boundaries, especially with kids. I, I see a lot of parents that get a divorce that use their kids as collateral, and oh, well, I bought the car, so I'm not going to let my daughter take the car to the mom's house because I don't want the mom to benefit from the car I bought. I mean, really? You're really going to play that game? That game of using your child as a as a chess piece, a pawn in the game in the game to get back at, at your wife. I remember when I was dating after I broke up with my husband, um, I was with a guy who who literally had just broken up with his wife, which is by the way very dangerous to date with anyone who's literally within six months of of, of dealing with the breakup. And his daughter, who was in high school, asked her dad for like a hundred bucks to buy her mom a Mother's Day gift, and he happily and almost with satisfaction told me at the dinner table he's like i told my daughter you know over my dead body would i give you money to buy your mother a gift and i was revolted by that like i remember being nauseous i'm, I'm a total empath and i was nauseous about that see because if, if you really pull away the emotions you can see how wrong that was of this man i don't care how much you hate your ex-wife i do not care how much you hate her She's still the mother of your children and vice versa. I don't care if you're a woman and, and you can't stand your husband or your soon-to-be ex-husband. He's still the father of your children, still the mother of your children. So why would you do that? You, you don't pull in the kids into the drama. You, you just don't do that. You, you're grown up. Okay, act like one. I know it's hard with the emotions and the anger, but that's the other key element of the divorce is you have to understand that you're going to go – not so, because that's what happens. A divorce makes you go crazy, mashugana, not so. And you really have to own that. And I, you can't control what your partner will do. Your partner, and I mean like your ex-wife or your ex-husband, who to be, also goes crazy. And it's very hard to control that. You can't control that. The only thing you can control is what you do and how you behave and how you react. But I'm here to tell you that the, the um, it's pretty bad. It's, it's, it's actually not pretty bad. It's downright awful. But... But when, when you, you get, get through, through it, it and you go through that hell and you enter that dark tunnel and you go through a dark tunnel that's not just dark but it's downward, you, you will hit rock bottom and then you're going to have to work very hard to climb out of that and you're going to see the light at the other side of that tunnel. And when you get to that light, it is like nirvana. It is euphoric it is freedom it is it is a, a, an opportunity to rebuild transform create the life that you always wanted to create it, it, it truly gives you that opportunity that's what divorce does if you do the work correctly stay with me subscribe to my channel and you'll do the work correctly if you do the right work correctly and you decide to go through with this divorce and you work on yourself, and you fix yourself, and you address your neediness, and, and you become strong, you, you won't even recognize who you are at the end of this process. I think the whole process takes around two, two to three years to really come full circle and get back to normal because it does go crazy. And by the way, you don't have to get a divorce or separate in order to reach that same transformation. I mean, I achieved it only through a divorce. I don't believe that I personally could have achieved this self-transformation that I've achieved, which is why I'm showing up here on YouTube and TikTok and, and, and all the other social platforms, unless I had a divorce. The divorce is what enabled me to transform myself. I had to crash and, and just completely collapse that way. But if your marriage is still good in a lot of ways and there's just some bad issues, then I encourage you to do your self-work first. Don't get a divorce. If, if things are still pretty good, there's other things you should work on, then, then do that. Because the, the collateral damage and the pain from the divorce is, it's no joke. But again, I'm a survivor, if you want to use that word of, of a divorce, and I'm going to tell you that I have zero regret. I'm talking two zeros, three zeros, however many zeros you want. No regret 
and leaving him and, and breaking up my family. My boys at the time were 13 and 16. It was terrible, but I have no regret. I feel guilty. I still feel badly, and I think that's an emotion I'll live with forever, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it because I honored me. I honored my needs, my desires, and my passions, and I also knew that I did everything I could to save the marriage, but I was so codependent with him, and I gave so much, and just, I mean, that's a whole other video that I'll, that I'll talk about, but that's really what you need to ask yourself. How much have you worked on fixing? And is the issue really you or is the issue the relationship? And if fixing yourself in the marriage would help, but if you feel like all those options have been exhausted and you're just completely done and you've had enough and you're in the state of just like, get me out of here, then, then honor, honor yourself, honor yourself. So. I don't recommend it, but it certainly is an option of self-preservation, transformation, freedom of authenticity, authenticity, such a big word, and being true to who you really are. For me, it was worth all of it, and you know, I have zero regrets, but as I told you, you'll, you will probably always feel badly and guilty about it, but I made the decision that I come first period that that was for me so anyway those are my thoughts when it comes to a divorce um, again seek therapy seek counseling more from objective people not so much your friends because your friends are subjective so they're not going to really be able to coach you and, and 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 give you the counsel that you really need you need you need strangers who are not emotionally involved with you or worse emotionally involved with her and your kids that really won't be able to see what's happening they just won't so i used to really listen to my friends a lot and my family and in retrospect it was wrong i should have actually gone to a therapist a long time ago but again it doesn't matter i encourage therapy i encourage a support group or you know connecting you know you can um, i offer uh coaching sessions as well i do a free 20 minute discovery call you can contact me whatever works for you uh, but try to do it with people that don't really know you and see if there's ways to first fix your issues or work on the relationship before you go to this place of, of, of a divorce. By the way, there's some states, I believe New York and California, don't quote me on it, but they require a mandatory, it's either a six month or a 12 month separation, and I think that is really smart because sometimes you know people get a divorce because someone cheats on them, and it's trauma and emotion and ego and hubris and all these things, and they go through with it and go through with it, and then like five years later, there's, you know, did I do the right thing? Did I do the right thing? And I don't want you there. I don't want you five years post decision to then question it, because I'm five years post my decision, and every day I say, thank God, I did what I did. I, you know, my regret was just not doing it sooner. Honestly, that's the truth. But there are couples out there that when they go through a divorce, there's remorse, like, did I do the right thing? And that means you probably acted in haste with emotion and not thought, and maybe there was a, you know, an affair going on or you know, whatever the case may be. So you, you really, really need to think this through, and that's why I love what California and New York does, that they force the separation because it really allows the emotions to calm down, right? You get, you get angry and upset, but everything calms down. So anyway, those are my thoughts about divorce. Feel free to contact me. I'll put my contact information below. You can also find me on Instagram and on TikTok. Send me an email on my website, fearlesswoman.co. On my website, there's a contact us page. Feel free to contact me there. We can set up a 20-minute discovery call and uh, see if you know getting a divorce really makes the most sense. I'm a big fighter for marriage. I'm a big fighter for a family. I was married 20 years, I fought really, really hard, but ultimately, I hit my trigger, I hit my point of no return, and I executed. I went through hell. I collapsed, it was very, very hard, but I am a transformed woman, so I know that if this is the right path for you, and you're making this decision wisely and, and, and intellectually with analysis and not just with emotions, drama, then you'll make the right decision. See you soon. Thank you.